What's going on guys? My name's Theo Atrix and today I'm going to be ranking all of the bosses in old school RuneScape from the easiest to the hardest ones to kill. The main goal of this video is to hopefully help some low level players work out which boss they're capable of killing and for the high level players hopefully it gives you a better idea of the difficulty of all the bosses. So with each boss that I want to talk about, I'm going to be talking about the recommended stats, the notable drops, including pets, and I'll also explain the best way to kill it. Keep in mind, I'm only going to be including the bosses which can be killed at any given time. So I'm not going to be including the bosses like the Slayer bosses because you need to kill them on a Slayer task. I'm not going to include bosses like Obor because you need the Giant's Key and things like the Penance Queen, which is only done on wave 10 of Barbarian Assault. I'm also not going to include any of the Demi bosses like the Chaos Fanatic and the Crazy Archaeologist. A few of the other bosses I'm not including are the Great Ohm, Jad, or Scatizo. So keep in mind, throughout this video, the difficulty of these are from my own experience and my own opinion on the bosses. So starting off, the easiest boss or set of bosses in old school RuneScape has to be the Barrows Brothers, but I'm not going to talk about them because I personally don't really consider them to be a boss. Next in line has to be the Giant Mole, which is underneath Falador Park. With Protect from Melee on, you can really, really easily solo this boss, but he can get really tedious and annoying without the Hard Falador Achievement Diary, which gives the Mole Locator. To kill the Mole, all you need is around base 60 melee combat stats and at least level 43 prayer for Protect from Melee. He drops about 20k per kill no matter what, and he also drops a pet at the rate of 1 in 3000. Next is the King Black Dragon in a team. If you were soloing the King Black Dragon, I'd rank it a lot higher than this since he hits very, very consistently. But in a team of people with above 70 ranged, you can really easily kill him and kill him very quickly. He drops the pet at a rate of 1 in 3000 and he also drops the Draconic Visage at a rate of 1 in 5000. Next on the list has to be the Chaos Elemental, as long as you're using the flinching method to kill him. If you don't know what that is, you can watch my Chaos Elemental guide, a card will appear on the screen now. I'd recommend having at least 60 to 70 attack and strength to kill him with the flinching method, but with the regular way of killing him, he would be a lot higher on this list and you need far higher stats. He drops the Chaos Elemental pet at a rate of 1 in 300 and he drops the Dragon Pickaxe at a rate of 1 in 256. Dagonoth Rex is another pretty easy solo boss and to do him effectively you need to have at least level 75 magic for the Trident and at least 70 attack, strength and defense in order to wear Guthans. It can take a bit of time to get the hang of Rex and the spawns but once you understand where you need to stand to just solo Rex and none of the others, it becomes a piece of cake. Rex drops the Berserker Ring, which is currently about 2.8 mil, and it drops it at a rate of 1 in 128, and it also drops the Pet Rex at a rate of 1 in 3000. Next is Scorpia, the Wilderness Boss, which is located near the Chaos Elemental, and it's recommended to have at least 75 magic for the Trident, and you also need Protect from Range, so 40 Prayer, to kill him. You also need Freeze spells like Entangle, but the best to use is Ice Burst, since you need to freeze two of the healers at once. If you take a team of two or three people, you can really easily just outdo the healers, so you don't need a freeze spell, but if you are soloing, you will need freeze spells. Scorpia drops the Odium and Malediction Shards 3, and they're both well above 2.7 mil each. It also drops the pet at a rate of 1 in 2000. As a group, the Dagonoth Kings can really, really easily be done. In a group of three people with base 70 combat stats, you can stay there for almost like two hours consistently killing all three of the kings. In order to kill them effectively, you really need to understand how they work and how to do them. I'm going to make a guide on that soon, so keep your eyes peeled for that. 
the Dagonoth Kings drop their corresponding Fremenic rings at a rate of 1 in 128, and they also drop the pets at a rate of 1 in 5,000. Next is Vetion, and in my opinion, he should only ever be killed from the safe spot, and I have a video explaining that if you want to have a look. To kill him and his Hellhounds effectively, you should have at least 70 in all of the combat stats, and you can do it with more than one person, but there's really no point other than the fact that it speeds up the kills a little bit. He drops the Dragon Pickaxe at a rate of 1 in 256, and he also drops the Ring of the Gods, which is almost 10 mil. He also drops the pet at a rate of 1 in 2000, but you need to keep in mind that kills take up to 5 minutes with Vetion. A lot of people might think Vetion should be harder than the next one, but since the safe spot is available for Vetion, it's way more simple. Next is Callisto, and there is a safe spot for Callisto, but the Vetion safe spot is far easier to maneuver, so I've ranked Callisto a bit harder. Callisto is the big grey bear which roams in around level 40 wilderness and in a team of 2 to 4 people he really really easily can be killed as long as each member has at least 70 attack, strength and defense for full Verax. He drops the tyrannical ring which is about 2.5 mil at the moment and he also drops the cub which I think has to be one of the cutest pets in the game and drops at a rate of 1 in 2000. Now provided you have an experienced tank, Bandos is probably the easiest God Wars boss to kill. To kill him effectively, you need a team of at least 3 people, and they all need to have at least maybe 80 in all of the combat stats. He drops the Bandos armor pieces along with the hilt and the boots, and he also drops the pet Grador at a rate of 1 in 5,000. Venonatus, the wilderness spider boss, is very similar to Callisto and has the same requirements, but since he has an attack which can one hit you, I've ranked this one a little bit harder than Callisto and even Bandos. Adding to his difficulty is the fact that it's a very highly PK'd area. This spider drops the treasonous ring, which is only 650k at the moment, and he also drops the pet approximately every 3,000 kills. The Zamorak God Wars boss, Krill Tutsaroth, I think that's how you say it, is quite easy to kill with a good team, but his prayer draining special attack makes him really hard to kill and more annoying than Bandos. There's quite a few roles you can take when killing the Zami boss, and each of them are most effectively done if you have at least 70 in all of the combat stats. He can drop the Staff of the Dead, the Zamorakian Spear, the Zamorak Hilt, and he also drops the Pet at a rate of 1 in 5000. Sadly, all of the Zamorak drops are under 10 mil, so he's really rarely killed for money. The Cowfight Queen is really high on this list, mainly due to the fact that she has a very, very accurate attack rate and hits very often, making it possible to only do one kill per trip. It's recommended to have at least 85 in all the melee combat stats to kill her while using Verax. But there are a few other ways to kill her, but I prefer the Verax method. With the super high difficulty, she has really crappy drops to be honest, and her most valuable is the Dragon Chain Body, which drops at a rate of 1 in 128. She also drops the Calphite Queen Heads, which are used to make the green coloured Slayer Helm, and she also drops the pet at a rate of 1 in 3000. Kree Ara, the Armadil boss, is a fairly simple boss to kill, but it can hit up to 71 if you aren't using Protect from ranged, and that usually happens when you're not paying attention at the start of a kill, and they smack you before you have protection on. He's pretty hard to solo, but in a team, he's considered to be one of the easier God Wars bosses, but of course, it's still not easy for lower leveled players. At least 80 ranged is recommended to kill him, and at least 3 people is ideal. He drops the Armadil Armor and the Armadil Hilt, which are all very, very expensive drops. He also drops the Pet at a rate of 1 in 5000. The Saradoman boss can be fairly easy to kill with really high stats and stamina potions with the hit and run method, but it's still only possible to get a few kills per trip if you're soloing. Killing her in a team 
can be kind of effective, but it's not really possible to do the hit and run method with more than one person. At least 80 ranged is recommended to kill her, but even higher would be really, really beneficial. Commander Ziliana drops the Saradoman Sword, which is a bit cheap, the Armadil Crossbow, and the Saradoman Hilt, which are both really expensive drops. She also drops the pet at a rate of 1 in 5,000. Zolra is a solo only boss and is second last on my list here, but once you fully get the hang of Zolra, he really isn't that hard to kill. To be able to kill Zolra properly, I'd recommend having at least 85 magic and at least 75 ranged. The hardest part about Zolra is working out the phases and the jad phase. You should always have a phase diagram next to you when you're killing him, otherwise he gets pretty tricky. I'm going to make a guide on this pretty soon. He can drop the Tanzanite Fang, the Magic Fang, and the Serpentine Visage, which are his unique drops, and he also drops the Uncut Onyx, all of these at a rate of 1 in 512, and they're all well over 2 mil. It's possible to earn up to 2 mil per hour killing Zora with good gear and weapons, and he also drops the pet at a rate of 1 in 4,000, and also drops mutagens, which can be used to recolor the Serpentine Helm to different colors, and these mutagens are dropped at a rate of 1 in 6.56 thousand. The Corporal Beast has to be the hardest boss in the game, but with a big team, he really isn't that hard at all. It's recommended to have at least 85 attack, strength, and defense to kill him effectively in a team of up to 5 people. When there's more than 7 or 8 people in the room, he starts healing himself to scale for the amount of people there. He drops the sigils, which are used to make each of the spirit shields, and he also has a lot of other very valuable drops. The most expensive drop of his is the Elysian Sigil, which currently sells for about 300 mil. He can also drop the pet, and that's dropped at a rate of 1 in 5,000. Now it's time for Clip of the Day, and today's is a screenshot from Free Taco Guy, who managed to get a third age ranged bottom on his 14th hard clue. Well done, man, and congratulations. Anyways guys, I hope you learned something useful today about the bosses in Old School RuneScape. If you did, be sure to leave a like on this video. If you want to see more RuneScape videos like this one, check out the other videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.